Okay, now I'm still working on this same VF700 from yesterday. When you get over to this side, I've already got my bolts already pulled. I've got my dipstick pulled out. I've got my oil fill cap pulled out. Um, my brake switch is loose. Everything's out of the way. I'm, all I'm going to have to do is scooch that down. But I see a lot of guys that they'll go prying on these. You know what? You ain't got to do that and you mess up a lot of stuff. Just take you a little 2 by 4 and Once you got it just kind of loose, find you a good spot. I got one right there. Ain't. Okay, let me get that wire thing out of the way. That ain't gonna work. So you do have to pry just a little bit. Um, but you don't want to mess up that gasket because that gasket's about 90 bucks. Well, guess what? Right here, where your leads for your stator go through. No, don't do that. And Honda used to be real good about leaving you something to grip, and they quit that over the years. I'm going to have to go back to plan A. But I'm going to have to go a little heavier with it. Always use wood. Don't never ever use brass or anything metal. You'll mess up some aluminum quick. Okay, now there I saw it move. All I need so now I don't have to pry on this bitch very much. I should just be able to take this dinky ass screwdriver and just go tap tap like this. And that whole cover just came free. Now I haven't messed up the gasket because I only went in there about a sixteenth of an inch. And when I go around, I'm just very gently popping, pop a little bit, pop a little bit more, all the way around, real gentle. This way you don't end up having to buy a gasket that you really don't want to pay that kind of money for. I'm just proud of that damn gasket for some reason. I think they're hurting for money and they're trying to rip off the public. Nah, nah. Wait a minute, I can get a democratic conspiracy joke in here. And unfortunately, I wouldn't be joking. Them fuckers. Anyway. That's that cover loose all the way. And I do have one spot where the gasket is sticking to the case. Fuck. Okay, I'm buying a gasket anyway, but at least I tried. Now, the minute you pop this sucker, don't goof around. Take you some white lithium grease. Um, I'm not a big believer in the rub it in kind. I like this kind. You just spray it in there. Actually, that was the ignition pickup leads. But anyway, now that you got your cover pot, spray every damn thing. I don't care what it is, because just in case, you know, you never know. Joey might come by with his daily driver and has to have the fucking thing running today. Willie Bob might come by with a fat joint and your ass passed out on the damn floor. You just never know what's going to happen. So spray the holy shit out of that with some white lithium grease. And if you get your ignition pickups, don't fucking worry about it. God damn, they're meant to stay in law. Quit being a paranoid little wuss. And get back in them cracks too. Don't think just because you can't see that shit that it don't need a good coating. 
And that ain't gonna hurt nothing because this bike's going back on the road soon. And when you do put it back on the road, you've already had the sucker apart, so you know. Hey, um, you're gonna be changing the oil in 100 miles anyway. In fact, on this one, I'm gonna change the oil probably after I run it about two hours because I just seen what come out of there, and that shit's nasty. Anyway, holler at y'all fuckers and fuckettes later. Okay, now, all this red shit that's inside this cover, well, that ain't really red shit. You see, a lot of people don't believe it. But oil turns to, get, turns to varnish just like gas does. I'm going to give this a couple of seconds here with a toothbrush and make me a clean spot just to show you. The reason I take this extra time to clean this out is because that is varnish. And if you've already got a motor that's been sitting 20 years and it might have just a hair of rust between, a, you know, in an oil ring or something, um, you really don't want this crap in there. You want to make sure you get it good and clean. You want to make sure you check your little seals on your uh, oil sight window too. Um, and a lot of bikes, this will fix your oil sight window because you know when they get old you can't see through them. Um, it's usually just varnish and then people don't run them long enough to get them off. Because uh, this here, what's inside this cover, would normally take about two oil changes to wear out. But, uh, that's not a good thing to do because if you've got a ring that's half stuck from rust or something anyway, which this one doesn't, I just re-sleeved the bitch, but uh, if you've got a ring or something that's half stuck from fucking rust, you know, you've got a mess because you stand a better chance of sticking it than freeing it up, running it with all this extra varnish in there. Take you a few minutes, take you a toothbrush. I'm just going to, I'm going to be honest, I'm going to let this sucker sit in the parts cleaner because this shit's thick. But, uh, that's all the difference in the world right there. Look at that. Now, uh, for those of you who think synthetic oil doesn't turn to varnish, here is your bullshit statement right here because that's what come out of this bike. That's all that's ever been in this bike. It turns to varnish just like conventional oil does. Anyway, I am going to put the fill cap back in because I want this to overflow and maybe hopefully soak some of the shit underneath it because this parts cleaner is getting awful fucking full right now from this bag. Yeah, well, this is Helmet Kid. Now, Helmet Kid, he ain't good for nothing, but if you ever need a bad example, this is it. <laughs> now, by the way, this commercial break has been brought to you by Kotex. It's not the best thing in the world, but it's right up there next to it. Okay, it's about 20 minutes later on this cover. And it now looks like that. I still got a couple little things I got to get out of there, but all that varnish is gone. So that's one less thing to worry about when you go to fire the motor. There's some old varnish taking down your new parts because you blocked up a ring or some shit like that, and I decided I'm going to flush the inside of this motor, um, just based on what I saw right here. But uh, that gives you a clue. The oil does really turn into varnish, and uh, set them right there so I got them later. And it doesn't take shit to clean them up. I'm gonna go polish this darn cover so it looks good when I put it on. It's kind of nasty right now. Got all that ugly shit going on. Um, and I gotta change clutch springs while I'm in there, or at least check them, see why they ain't coming loose. It might just be a little bit of rust, I doubt it. I'm probably going to be changing the springs. Anyway, I'll let y'all later. Alright, now this is what you call, I'm an old lazy Yankee bike.
This is meant for old lazy Yankees. Now granted it's a BMW and I get a half a heart on just because it says BMW on it, but uh And it's got the same K1200 engine I kind of like. I like the K. I like the old original K100 a lot better myself. But look at this son of a bitch. I mean, it's got electric. Got that. It's fucking got a magnifying glass on the GPS. I mean, that's how you know that you're a Yankee old fuck and you done got lazy. AM, FM, manual, on CD. Hell, it's got a CC, CD changer. Got speakers, got air ride, and shit, I don't know. Oh, hell, it's got reverse on it. Look <laughs> at that. You ain't even got to back that fucker up. It's got its own reverse gear. Six, D, uh, DVD player. I mean, six, six CD changer. <laughs> and you put your cell phone right there. I don't know what this Velcro shit is, but look at this. It's got a mess of plug-ins, uh, you know. And this is what not to do with your electrical system, by the way. <laughs> I'm pretty sure Helmet Kid must have designed that. <laughs> uh, it's no big deal. These things got like a 60, 70 amp alternator. Oh yeah, electric windshield, electric mirrors. Electric damn windshield, look at that shit. I mean, this is this has gone beyond rolling couch. It's the whole fucking living room. That's all there is to it. Stereo sounds good though. That sounds better than the stereo on the damn Goldwing. Flip down armrest. Got them. Got got separate volume controls just for the passenger. <laughs> oh man. Oh hell, it's got a phone jack plug up there. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh man. Alright, that's it for that one. God damn. This is what you buy when you have been a Yankee all your life and you done got lazy. Man, I'm telling you. That, that, fuck. The only thing that don't have is the kitchen sink. Oh no, wait a minute, I think that's an accessory. <laughs> Okay, now, this is that same motor I've been into a million fucking times, and I'm still cleaning on it. I got that side cover polished today. I got Mother's Magnum Aluminum laying on it. I've got the other ones on, but I had to take a couple off. That's no big deal. Um, they were in the way of getting these carbs out without hurting nothing. Anyway, if you look in on that back jet right there, See how nasty that is? That's all dirty and shit. Now, these are what clean jets look like, but those ain't clean inside. See, I cheated on this bike. I've had that these carbs apart, but all I did was fill the bowls with carb cleaner. So they ain't clean all the way through. It's just these top ones are looking pretty because they're really the bottom ones when they're on the bike. Um, and I shot a little bit through the fuel line on a pump with some carb cleaner. Um, but what I'm doing now, I've got these suckers upside down like this. I'm blowing right through each of them jets for about an hour or whatever it takes until that sucker is pretty, pretty clean on the inside. I mean, nice and shiny like these here. Oops, like them there. Fucking camera doesn't always aim where I want it to. But, uh, and I'll clean up all the rest of this shit in here too. But now, a lot of guys, you think, you know, they think, oh, fuck, just run some sea foam through it. Now, when a bike's been sitting this long, that is varnish in there. You'll see in the morning, these floats are actually kind of yellowish. Um, they're not meant to be orange. That orange is varnish. Um, see, uh, those are, yeah, those are fading a little bit. But, I mean, that's going to take a little while to work that off there. Now, in order not to have to take the diaphragms out of the carburetors, what I've got in here today is just straight Marvel Mystery Oil, um, half and half with diesel. 
This shit's an expensive mix, but it saves you a lot of time and it's really effective at cleaning these carbs. Now these mains I shouldn't be too concerned with because I'm going to have to rejet this bitch to match the exhaust anyway. I've got some spare jets laying around, you know, fuck with them until I get the right set to where it just sounds right and feels right. I ain't going to dyno this one out. Now I already know the carbs are balanced and somebody, some idiot out there in La La Land is going to say, well why didn't you take the air barks apart? You ever tried to get a set of carb sticks on these fucking V45 carbs? That is a bitch. If they're already balanced, take the whole goddamn air box out with the carbs. Leave the linkage alone. Don't touch nothing. Um, and that about covers that. Alright, one more thing and then I'm going to go smoke a bowl and leave y'all alone. I forgot about this. Once you've got this, your carbs off, I've already done this, you can see it. Take you some of this white lithium grease. Make sure you spray them valve shafts in there. Take your finger and just bend that sucker in there. Soak them fucking valves. Now I know there's some crybaby ass cheapskate Yankee out there going, Oh, but that'll fuck up your plugs. Well, you know what? These plugs are five fucking years old anyway. You ain't gonna send this bike out. You ain't gonna put it on the road with no fucked up ass shit like that. If you do, you're an idiot. You burn through the plugs that are in it, clean them a couple of times, and then before you put it on the road for real, throw in a set of iridiums. These things love iridiums. And normally I'd say Bosch Platinum Plus 4s on a V65 because they do perform a lot better. These little V45s, you're a lot better off just putting in iridiums. Um, they're not going to give you any extra gas mileage that you're going to notice, but they give you a lot more ass when you're leaving the stoplight. That's about all they do. Um, the pl Platinum Plus 4s, yeah, they'll give you a little bit better gas mileage on these little V45s, but... You don't want to try cleaning them motherfuckers, and they're $7 a piece. You don't want to try replacing them neither. But, uh, anyway, that covers the basics. Now, the reason I put that white lithium grease in there on them valve shafts is in case there's a little bit of rust or something on there. It'll loosen it up. It'll make it break away before I go to fire the motor. And you know damn well this thing's been sitting a long time, so they're fucking dry. Well, by the fact that they're dry, you go on ahead, you do the right thing, give them a little bit of pre-lube and when I have these valve covers off this next time again I'm gonna pre-lube everything in there with just regular fucking uh, assembly engine assembly lube like just like I was putting in brand new ones and you do that so that you don't end out with scored bearings and shit like that and all the stuff that everybody complains about oh man I unstuck one I brought it out of storage well this one wasn't stuck um, but it was brought out of storage, and it was brought out of storage with a lot of parts in there that ain't had oil on them in a long time. Pre-lube every fucking thing that you can get to. Um, that ain't no commandment from God, but uh, it should be. Anyway, I'll let y'all later. I, my, my, Mr. Bongley is just calling my name. I'm sorry about that.